What killed Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi? The chopper crash, of course. But not everyone is convinced. Conspiracy theories abound. In fact, they emerged the second the news broke of the chopper disappearing. Was it Israel? Was it another foreign power? People on the internet and off it cannot stop asking. And can you really blame them? After all, the timing is such. The geopolitical situation in West Asia and outside is such. For over 72 hours, we paid no heed to these theories, knowing very well that conspiracy theories always shadow such historical events. They are like conjoined twins. Did two shooters kill John F. Kennedy? Did NASA fake the moon landing? Was Princess Diana's death not an accident? Was Indian scientist Homi J. Baba killed? The answer is we do not know and we may never know. But what we do have tonight are extensive details of the final moments of the chopper crash that killed the Iranian president. Do they hint at foul play or do they put to rest all speculation? A man named Golem Hossein Ismaili has given an explosive interview to an Iranian news network. Ismaili was Raisi's chief of staff. He was part of the helicopter convoy on the ill-fated day. He was in the chopper that was behind the president's helicopter. Ismaili says the weather that day was absolutely clear. There was no fog. It was only half an hour into the journey that they saw a small patch of clouds. He says, and I'm quoting, In one small compacted area, there was a small patch of clouds above a cliff. Quote, unquote. Adding, quoting further, It was there that the now martyred helicopter pilot, who was also the commander of the fleet, told the rest of the pilots to ascend above the clouds we were third behind the president's helicopter. We rose above the clouds and advanced for approximately 30 seconds. Esmeli then described what he thought were an new, unusual series of events. One, while ascending, they did not feel any turbulence. Number two, after ascending, they realized there were no other clouds. Number three, the pilot of his chopper suddenly realized the president's chopper was missing. They could not see it. It had disappeared. Now, let me quote from that interview again. After ascending above the clouds, we did not see the main helicopter. The ascension itself did not feel difficult or hard. Sometimes when we use the plane, we feel turbulence, but we did not feel anything at all inside the helicopter this time when ascending. And after we ascended, there were no other clouds. Shortly after, we were able to see beneath us and there were no clouds anymore. Ismaili says the pilot of his chopper decided to make a U-turn and look for the president's chopper. They thought the main chopper had made an emergency landing. But the pilot could not make radio contact with the commander of the president's chopper. Ismaili says, quoting, I asked him when was the last time contact was made? The pilot answered, a minute and 30 seconds ago when the pilot told us to ascend above the clouds. Quote, unquote. What happened next? Esmeli and the others on his chopper decided to start making phone calls to those in the president's helicopter. They called the president's bodyguard. They called the Iranian foreign minister, Hussein Amir Abdulian. They also called the governor of East Azerbaijan, who was also on that ill-fated chopper. But they got no response. And finally, someone picked up the phone. Who was it? Let me read out from that interview. I'm quoting. It was Ayatollah Hashim, the Friday Imam of Tabriz. He told us that he was not feeling well. He did not tell us anything special. I asked him what exactly had happened. He told us that he did not know what had happened. And when asked about his whereabouts, he said he did not know. He only described what he could see.
described to us what he saw. For example, how he was surrounded by trees. I asked him about the condition of the others. The Ayatollah replied that he is alone and could not see anyone else and he is alone. Quote, unquote. And those were the final moments leading to the crash and resulting in the deaths of the Iranian president, the Iranian foreign minister, and everyone else traveling with them. This. And the interview invites more questions. How is it that two of the three choppers managed to ascend above the clouds, but the president's chopper disappeared? The pres president's chopper was being flown by the senior most pilot. He was the one who had spotted the stray cloud. He instructed the other pilots what to do. Then how is it that the fleet's commander somehow could not navigate his own helicopter? Remember, Iran's state media first reported that the president's chopper had made a quote-unquote hard landing. The obscurity left enough scope for speculation and speculation is exactly what followed. What took the Iranian authorities to find the missing chopper? Was there something they were covering up? Was it the state of Iran's decaying aerial fleet or was it covering up an insider job? Or was there something else they had discovered at the crash site? You see, whenever there, there is a tragedy in Iran, the finger automatically points at its foe in the shadow war, Israel. The timing did not leave any scope for, for exception. Just weeks ago, Iran and Israel had their first direct conflict. On the 1st of April, Iran's consulate in Damascus was struck. Seven officers of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps were killed. Among them were two senior commanders. Iran responded by launching a missile and drone attack on Israel on the 13th of April. On the 19th of April, drones were shot down over the Iranian city of Isfahan. Iran did not blame Israel. That did not stop the world from reading between the lines. Israeli drones have a history of hovering into Iran and attacking military facilities. In fact, Israel's spy unit Mossad has a history of carrying out operations within Iran and getting away with it. In the year 2020, Iran's nuclear scientist Bossen Fakhrizadeh Fakhrizadeh was killed while he was driving his car. Iran said Mossad had used a robotically operated machine gun which was mounted on a truck parked on the roadside and operated by a sniper who was sitting miles away. In April 2022, Israeli news outlet Haaretz reported that Israeli intelligence agents had detained and questioned an IRGC agent at his residence in Iran, where he confessed to a plan to assassinate an Israeli diplomat in Turkey. As recently as in June 2023, Mossad said that it carried out an operation in Iran and captured the suspected head of a hit squad that planned to kill Israelis in Cyprus. In a statement, Mossad quoted one of its senior officials as saying, and I'm quoting here, we will get to every official who advances terror against Jews and Israelis anywhere in the world, including within the Iranian territory. In short, Mossad has a history of operations in Iran, and Israeli leaders know this very well, which explains why Israel was quick to dissociate itself from Raisi's death. Hours after the news broke, an Israeli official told Reuters, it wasn't us. Here's what the U.S. said. The United States had no part to play uh, in, in that crash. And so and that's, that's a fact, plain and simple. Iran says it has launched a probe into the chopper crash. It's not unusual given the crash killed the country's president and foreign minister. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.